math, 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 math. All right, so here is our next rule, the quotient rule for finding with derivatives. The basic frame looks something like this in words. Uh, that's the procedure we're going to follow. Uh, notice it looks a lot like the product rule, except it's a minus sign here. It's more complicated, too, uh, because of the, uh, the way the answer will have a denominator where it's the bottom squared. Make sure that you always start with the bottom uh, on top here, and then the pattern goes as follows. So there's the general framework of what we're going to be following for the next example. So you can copy it down, and then start up the YouTube again to see the next example. So you can copy that down if you need to. All right, so here's our example with the quotient rule. We're given a function that is a quotient. It's got something divided by something else. And these are pretty complicated expressions, so we can't dodge the quotient rule by using the power rule instead. So let's apply the quotient rule to this. When I fill out my quotient rule, I always start with the bottom. It's the bottom squared. And we can just leave that alone throughout the entire answer. It will always be there at the end. You don't have to simplify it, just leave it as it is. So start with the bottom down there squared and also start with the bottom up here to set up the rest of the formula for completion. You still have three more blanks to fill out. And it's very similar to the way the product row works. You've got the original piece here, and then the derivative of the other piece. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top. Lucky for us, the top is just x minus 4, and the derivative of that would just be 1. For the second half of it, it's the top, unchanged, that's just copying it down right from the problem, times the derivative of the bottom, which would be 2x plus 5. From here, you just use a little simplification to get a better answer. You can multiply 1 to that stuff on the left, and that will basically just make that disappear. You have to use the FOIL method here on this area to simplify it. And we'll do that here. We've got x times 2x is 2x squared. Multiply the outers together gives you 5x. Multiply the inners together gives you negative 8x. And multiply the last two together gives you negative 20. I just got that on the screen. Very good. Still, there's this minus sign here that affects everything after it. So this minus sign will have to be distributed to each of these pieces, too. You can do that now if you want to. Change it to an addition sign, and then flip all the signs that come afterwards. After that, it's just all about combining like terms. And I'm running out of room here, but I'll see if I can squeeze it down at the very bottom. So the answer would be, how many x squareds do we have all together? Negative 1x squared. Uh, what else do we have? We've got the uh, 5x and negative 5x. Those will cancel. Positive 8x is the only thing left standing with an x in it. And then you've got uh, 20, and that's it for the constant terms. Don't forget about the denominator. That's all part of the answer. You don't want to leave that out. Many students get so busy simplifying the top that they forget all about the little denominator down there. Yeah, usually when you work with a quotient rule, you'll end up with a quotient as an answer. So keep that in mind, too. you got a fraction starting off with. Most cases that you run into, you're going to get a fraction to finish things off with. And we've got time for one more example. That's the chain rule. And that's the third part of our, our series. So our last example here, 
for some calculus is the chain rule. So when you use the chain rule, well you use the chain rule as a convenient way to handle uh, expressions or formulas that have uh, exponent that's pinning down an, exp an expression, a polynomial expression. Um, and this is, a great, this is a great example here. You could actually work this out the long way, which would involve multiplying this times itself 15 times. It would fill up, you know, a few pages of, of paper, more than just a few, and you probably would mess up someplace along the way because of all the signs and and combining like terms that will go on. So a much convenient, more convenient way to work on the question is just to use the chain rule. And the chain rule wor works just like the power rule does. You know, the general power rule, what are you doing with that exponent is you're multiplying it out in front. So we can get an answer to a question that would take, I don't know, a half an hour to do a longer, by a longer method. With the chain rule, we can get the answer in just 30 seconds. So you multiply by 15, you get 150, you're going to lower the exponent by 1, just as you do for general power rule. The inside's staying the same, and we're just about done with the question. The only thing left is the link in the chain. There's one more part that's necessary to finish off the question. And the link is the derivative of the inside. So you don't want to forget that. I made a, a little joke, period three today, and I said that that would be like if someone sneezed and you didn't say, God bless you, afterwards. It's kind of rude. So this is the sneeze, ha you And this is the part where you say, God bless you. Or if you fart, and then you don't say, excuse me, you know, you're just a bum. So, uh, you know, maybe that helps you remember. And if that's good, that's fine by me. So it's the... Um, this piece right here, and then don't forget the derivative of the inside part, which ends up being here, 6x plus 8. Now, don't get tempted to multiply the 150 into the parentheses here. You are going to be tempted, because how many times do you see that in algebra? Oh, you see a number here, you multiply it through. In this case, not, this is not the case here, because this exponent is preventing you from going inside. Remember, with the order of operations, it goes exponents before multiplication. So if you wanted this 150 to go through the parentheses, you'd have to wait till this exponent does its thing. If you wanted to do anything with that 150, you could multiply it to both of these numbers at the end, but even that's unnecessary. This is in a nice convenient form. It's all factored and I'd leave it just as it is. Well that concludes our, our quick trilogy of math. Hope you enjoyed it, and as a grand finale, I'm going to see if I can get this marker to stay on the board. My students know that it's a favorite pastime of mine. Let me go far, far away and see what happens. All right, I'm in the back of the room now. Here it comes. Five, four, three, two. Who's the man? It's me. Fast, 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 fast,